This is a Swedish Air Force Jazz 39C Grip and Light Single Engine Supersonic Multi Rail Fighter Aircraft, registration 39289. The pilot is landing on a section of road or vague bus, which is a road base for grip and aircraft to operate from in time of crisis. The pilot is ordered to disperse away from the aircraft's assigned home base during an exercise scenario of imminent enemy aggressive action towards Sweden. Section of road or highways during a time of military crisis would be used as an air road base to either land, take cover and conduct maintenance tasks, or to refuel, rearm, take off and continue with military orders. A mobile Grand Crew with fuel and maintenance vehicles would either be in position near the road or be making its way to the aircraft's location. This dispersal of key aircraft assets is to ensure that an attacker would not be able to knock out the majority of Swedish Air Force assets in a single coordinated attack. Sweden in particular was one of the best prepared countries in the world to be able to disperse its aircraft assets across multiple road bases, establishing the first of many road bases in 1959. This dispersal of aircraft, it was hoped, would preserve significant air assets to carry on Sweden's fight against an aggressive force. However, after the Cold War ended, Sweden in around 2003, just like a number of other European countries, stops investing in road bases and training programs. Poland after the Cold War era closed or abandoned almost all of its road bases, relying instead on traditional landing strips for the Polish Air Force MiG-29 Fulcrum and the Russian export Sukhoi Su-22, leaving just one road base still operational. Germany still has what it calls emergency landing airfields on sections of roads. These were used in the past to land NATO fighter aircraft onto West German Autobahn. The West German Air Force during this time began to receive in 1980 the first Panavia Tornado, an aircraft that is still in operation with German forces today. More recently, in 2003, the first German Luftwaffe Eurofighter Typhoon began its service just as most European air forces began to shut down road bases. It's understood there is no current system in Germany to maintain, refuel, arm and launch aircraft in emergency landing road sites. The United Kingdom in 1974 did briefly practice landing and takeoff operations with a Jaguar supersonic jet attack aircraft from the M55 motorway between Preston and Blackpool. Although the exercise proved successful, with a skilled pilot and Jaguar more than capable of landing and taking off on this unconventional landing strip, no further known road-based flight tests were ever conducted again with the Jaguar GR3A close air support for nuclear strike roll aircraft. However, it should be noted that the RAF at the time were operating the superb Harrier jump jet attack aircraft, capable of vertical short takeoff and landing operations. Conceived at the height of the Cold War to operate from improvised bases such as car parks, roadways and even forest clearings without requiring large and vulnerable air bases. Later, the design was adapted for use from aircraft carriers. The Harrier very quickly became the only UK fast jet aircraft capable of operating from the Royal Navy carrier fleet. The last of United Kingdom's RAF and Navy Sea Harriers were retired in 2010, retired years earlier than planned. This cost-cutting decision lost the United Kingdom's road base and unconventional landing strip capabilities. Here on the deck of HMS Illustrious, RO6, the Royal Navy, three years after Harriers were scrapped, had to conduct fast jet naval exercises with the United States Marine Corps AV-8B Harrier II. 
HMS Illustrious R06 was herself scrapped in 2016. She was the last of the three Invincible class aircraft carriers, with HMS Invincible R05 scrapped in 2010 and HMS Art Royal R07 scrapped in 2012. This was the first time the Royal Navy had no aircraft carrier capability since 1918, when the Royal Navy's first carrier, HMS Argus 149, was commissioned. It wouldn't be until 2020, after a series of landing and takeoff trials, before the Royal Navy was once again able to fully operate our own fast jets from a carrier. It was a RAF F-35B Lightning jet landing on the deck of the newly commissioned HMS Queen Elizabeth R08 in June 2020, but heralded the return of aircraft carrier operations by the Royal Navy. This is one of the last photographs of HMS Illustrious R06. She is next to her replacement, under construction, HMS Queen Elizabeth R08. Through all this post-Cold War changes across Europe, Finland was the exception. Throughout and after the Cold War, Finland operated a very similar road-based operation to her Swedish neighbour. Finnish military planners maintained their network of secondary airfields, including civilian airports and road bases, to improve survivability and effectiveness in the event of war. Her training programme and landing exercises never ceased to this day. In fact, with the introduction of the first F-18C and F-18D Hornets in 1995 and 1996 respectively, and the retirement of the Finnish Air Force Draken and MiG-21, the Finnish Air Force forward planned for all future air assets to be capable of landing on road bases. By 2017, all aircraft in the Finnish Air Force are now capable of operating from road bases, probably making it the most effective and flexible operator of road bases in the world. Here, a Finnish Air Force FA-18C, requiring fuel, is taking part in exercise Nordic Response 24 in Andernes, Norway. The pilot has rendezvoused with US Marine Air Crew operating a US Marine Corps KC-130J Super Hercules. Assigned to Marine Aerial Refueler Transport Squadron 252 Second Marine Aircraft Wing. The refueling exercise has proven the concept of refueling NATO aircraft across dispersed multiple locations during time of crisis, especially when established refueling facilities, for instance within military air bases, may no longer be accessible. The Finnish Air Force will soon transition to Lockheed Martin F 35A Lightning II with first airframes to arrive in 2025, enabling the Air Force to speed up the phasing out of its aging fleet of Hornets. After Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014, Swedish Air Force commanders began to reconsider their defence strategy, especially concerning the reintroduction of road bases. Sweden was invited by Finland to allow Jazz 39 Group of Fighters to take part in 2015 and 2016 Finnish Air Force road base drills. This footage is the third joint Finnish and Swedish large scale road base exercise recorded in Finland in 2017. Sweden began re establishing her road bases and rebuilding a logistics network of mobile aircraft maintenance, refueling systems, remote air crews, and communication networks. Swedish Air Force pilots in September 2017 conducted exercises on a number of Swedish roads for the first time since 2003. After the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, the United Kingdom's Royal Air Force and the United States Air Force started to rethink their road-based strategy, developing training programs and certification for pilots to land on unorthodox landing strips away from main air bases under wartime conditions. However, US Air Force and Marine Corps units were ahead of the game. After Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014, they had been training on highway operations both in the US and abroad. 
The 2016 drill map saw A10's practice landing on a highway in Estonia was the first of its kind in three decades. As you can see by these pictures, the US Air Force is continuing to conduct training on highway landings. These are A10 Thunderbolt II from the 107th Fighter Squadron, 127th Wing, Michigan Air National Guard. The A10 Warthogs are landing, refueling and taking off on a stretch of highway in Alger County, located in the upper peninsula of Michigan, 29th of June, 2022. The Royal Air Force had effectively lost its skills to land onto highway and road bases. Both the Royal Air Force and Norwegian Air Force were invited to conduct road landings under the guidance and supervision of Finnish Air Force training instructors. Seen here, a pilot from No. 41 Squadron, RAF, is landing a Typhoon FGR-4 jet onto a Finnish road base section, the first such landing by an RAF pilot in many years. However, the RAF and Finnish observers are particularly interested in the Norwegian Air Force pilots who have brought with them F-35A Lightning II who will also conduct road-based takeoff and landings. The RAF are preparing to certify in the very near future F-35B pilots to land and take off on road bases. The Finnish Air Force of course will be transitioning to F-35A in less than a year and will be very keen to begin road-based training with their newly trained F-35 pilots. Here, a Royal Norwegian Air Force F-35A is approaching the landing area on a highway in Finland for the very first time. A second Norwegian F-35A is following the same approach to a tree-lined highway. The war in Ukraine has exposed to Western militaries the significantly increased vulnerability to air assets from enemy long-range rockets and missiles, and the unbelievable surge in drone technology since the war began in 2022. It is vital that troops on the ground have the effective overhead defensive shield, basically air dominance of the battlefield in which air assets are available to neutralise threats, deliver supplies and equipment and to aid the rapid deployment of troops. Sustaining power in the air requires having places where jets and helicopters can land, refuel and rearm. Western Air Forces are now increasingly focused on dispersing the operation, reversing years of post-Cold War apathy. One way to do that is by getting back to basics and start using once again highways, rural roads and isolated lanes to land, refit and take off before the enemy catches up. Nordic Air Forces of Sweden, Norway, Finland and Denmark have increasingly trained and exercised together. Talks and discussions to create a single combined Nordic Air Force using a single defence command and control network is ongoing. A combined Nordic Air Force appears to make sense, especially with Norway, Finland and Denmark transitioning to operate F-35 Lightning II. Sweden will continue to operate her fourth generation group and fleet Talks concerning future replacements for the Gripen may include skipping current fifth generation advances and instead developing partnership or in-house a sixth generation style fighter with the aim to be fully operational by the late 2030s.
The Swedish Air Force, just like her Nordic neighbours, are increasing road-based exercises in a coordinated effort to train all group and fighter pilots. The Swedish Air Force, just like many other European neighbours, are still playing catch-up years after these road-based training programmes were dropped. Swedish fighter pilots, since the Swedish group and pilot trained in Finland, landing on National Road 44, near the F-7 airbase at Lidköping, Sweden, in 2017, was the start for other Grim pilots to learn the skills of landing on Swedish civilian roads, giving them extra flexibility in the event of a crisis. This large-scale exercise in the Gothenburg is designed to be a of lost skills. Fortunately for the Swedish Air Force, no additional engineering was required to commence Jazz 39 Group and Jets once again landing on unconventional landing strips. Jazz 39 Gripen were actually designed during the Cold War period and are fitted with a reinforced landing gear that props the plane high enough above the road surface to prevent debris from getting sucked down at the jet intake. This exercise involved six Gripen aircraft. On the ground, the Gripens make use of newly introduced mobile forward arming and refueling point equipment. Each plane, once landed, was able to fuel up by Swedish mobile Grand crews. In just a matter of minutes, each aircraft was able to take off again. It should be noted, NATO regards many of the road bases of its newest member, Sweden, as too narrow. Hence why you see most road-based exercises and training programs in Finland. With wider roads, they are even capable of landing small transport planes. The group and aircraft, however, are at home on Swedish road bases, because that's exactly what they were designed for. You're quite vulnerable at a main airbase if you get a uh, cruise missile attack or whatever you see in Ukraine. Uh, you know, the whole base can be destroyed. There is no way to, uh, to lift off with your aircraft or land and refuel and so on. So with this system you have like multiple small road strip all over the country so we can just drop down uh, at one that is active. So it's good for uh, survivability in, in wartime I would say. Since it's uh, a lot shorter and uh, uh, narrower you, you have to be more careful where to point your nose of course. Uh, and you don't have that much uh, margin in case anything goes wrong, you know. Since this is not uh, anything we do every day, we have a painted kind of this runway on the main runway, so we train there uh, every day and so. But uh, now it's for real, of course, you have uh, uh, another extra pound just on your, on your heart, of course. But it feels good to be a part of, of NATO and it feels like you're backed up with a lot of resources and we can also uh, back up NATO with our resources, our country and those kind of airstrips. <laughs> Three months into our NATO membership, I'd say Sweden is stronger and safer, and the alliance is also stronger with us as an ally, especially here in, the, in Northern Europe. This is a very long tradition. Today we call it agile combat deployment or dispersed ops. For us, I call it normal operations. We started in the, the 60s to design the system. Uh, you must remember Sweden, non-allied country, neighbor to Soviet Union, we have always perceived the threat from the East that we have to be able to leave our uh, Air Force bases very rapidly. So, and this is a part of that. So I'd say it's a part of our DNA. 
I think Sweden is uh, punching above our weight uh, when it comes to many things. Uh, and we have a long tradition of uh, domestic uh, arms manufacturing in all arenas or domains, but, but especially, of course, when we talk Air Force here, it's a fighter tradition. We, we started to build our own fighters during World War II, and we have continued ever since. Uh, then, of course, a grip and fighter of today is a multinational corporation. There are many uh, different subsystems from many different countries, but this design is Swedish, and some of the key uh, elements of the fighter is Swedish. Uh, some of the design features that we can see here when the taxi behind me on the runway designed for 800 meters runway length and designed to be handled by conscripts in the field. Well, the biggest advantage of using uh, highway landing uh, strips is that you could have more, more uh, possibilities and you could move around to more uh, takeoff and landing uh, surfaces.